got an IT interview coming up and need to prepare for it? Well, stay tuned for 10 of the top help desk tech support IT interview questions and answers. Hello again, tech fam, and welcome back to the Gadget Tools Unlimited YouTube channel, where we engage in IT career talk, tutorials, reviews, and news. I'm your host, Warner Bell, and let's get right into these entry-level IT interview questions and answers. Lego. So I'm gonna go with something that most people are probably familiar with, and that is the concept of gigabytes. A gigabyte is a unit of measurement for digital information. One gigabyte equals 1,024 megabytes. So that means that gigabytes are bigger than megabytes. Now, let's take your cell phone, for example. When you sign up for a cell phone plan, your data amount is measured in terms of gigabytes per month. And that tells you how much data you're able to access per month. Think streaming, movie downloads, social media, posts, whatever you're doing on the internet when data is exchanged over the internet from your device as a request back to your device um, delivering the content that you're requesting. Now for context, one gigabyte of data via your cell plan will get you about an hour of Netflix, about 17 hours of Google Maps, or about 13 hours of Facebook. So if you look into your monthly data usage via your cell phone plan, you can see how many gigabytes of data you typically use per month. And you might find it interesting to see that you might use a lot or you may not use as much and you might be able to even alter your data plan, save a few dollars. All right, question number two, what is a CPU? Uh, a CPU is the data processor of a computer. And CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. Um, it handles all of the instructions it receives from hardware and software running on a computer. For an example, um, the CPU might process instructions to use a web browser to open and display a web page on your monitor on your computer screen. CPU a lot of times is referred to as the brain of the computer and kind of, but it's really more to do with calculations. Usually some software program or, or hardware device tells the CPU what actions to take and the CPU just efficiently carries out those instructions. Question number three, how important is customer service? Customer service is very important, particularly in the IT area of help desk and desk side support. But generally, customer service in many ways is the backbone of business. If a customer has a good experience with a company, they're more likely to return and buy more products from that company. I also think that employees would rather work for uh, companies that treat their customers with respect because one day they made themselves be a customer and would want to be treated fairly. And it also shows that a company cares about the people who purchase the products and services that they provide. So yes, customer service is very important. Question number four, what is RAM? RAM is short for random access memory. RAM is like the fast and temporary data storage that a computer needs to access right away or in the next moment or so. Uh, you can think of it like RAM as being a computer's short-term memory. It uses it to handle all active tasks and applications. None of your programs, files, games, streams, or anything would ever work without RAM. In fact, the computers don't even work without RAM because they need a place to temporarily store short-term data. Now, in kind of a layman term scenario, you can think of it like this. This is my desk, right? And 
whatever I'm working on right now on this desk, I'm scribbling down on this paper. I want to be able to access right away in the next moment or so. So I'm going to keep it right here in front of me on my desk. That's RAM. If I'm working on something maybe for tomorrow or next week, I can save that in a drawer or in a file. And that would be like my hard disk or something to go back and take a look at later. But something that I'm going to need for the in the near future, I want to keep it close to where I can grab it, which is going to be my RAM on top of my desk. So that's just kind of a simple way to think about it. Question number five, how would you deal with a frustrated user or customer? The way I would handle a frustrated user is with empathy. A lot of times frustrated people just want to be heard. They've been aggrieved and they want someone to listen to the grievance and understand their perspective on the issue. And so generally what I do is I allow them to vent their frustrations to me and, and I just listen to everything they have to say and I assure them that I will do everything in my power that I can do to assist them and to rectify the situation. So after they've explained their situation and explained how they feel about it, I empathize with them, let them know I can understand exactly why they feel the way they feel, reassure them that I am here to help them in any way that I can and that I will do within the best of my ability everything that I can do to resolve their issue. And that is how you deal with a frustrated user. Question number six, what is the most current version of Windows operating system and what was the previous? And so the most current version of Windows is Windows 11. You might've heard about it. It is currently available, but there are minimum system requirements. And I've been seeing that many people's systems don't meet the requirements. The previous version of Windows was Windows 10. Lots of people are still using Windows 10 and will be using it in the near future because a lot of people aren't ready to move over to Windows 11. I personally have not even taken a look at it. I've read a couple things on it, but I haven't tried to do any experimenting with it myself, which I will probably be doing sometime here in the near future. But those are it. Uh, Windows 11 is the new one and Windows 10 is the previous one. And the one before that, the most popular one before that, I'll say is Windows 7 because there was Windows 8, but it was trash. Nobody used it. I hated it. So Windows 7 before that. And believe it or not, there are still some um, PCs out there with Windows 7 installed. on. Question number seven. What are three skills that you believe a person in this position should have. And I can tell you right now, those are going to be customer service skills, computer hardware skills, and computer software skills. And we all know that customer service is important because uh, we discussed it earlier in this video. But a lot of what help desk is and entry level IT is, is customer service. You're dealing with end users or customer facing as it's called in the industry, you're dealing with end users and you need to address the issues they're having with their technology. You have to be patient. You have to be able to explain complex technology in layman's terms, and you have to help them resolve their issues. Definitely going to need to know about computer hardware because you may need to change a hard drive. You may need to change a RAM stick. You may need to add a bay drive or something to a, a desktop or a laptop. So computer hardware is going to be definitely beneficial in this position. And of course, computer software, because most organizations use software on their computers to do for their employees to do their job. And the, the biggest one is Office 365. And it has your Outlook, your Word, your PowerPoint, your Excel. Some knowledge of all of these softwares is going to definitely be beneficial in this position. Help desk, desk side support, tech support. Question number eight, what is a GPU? And GPU stands for graphics processing unit. And it is just like the CPU central processing unit, 
but for graphics. So you can say that a GPU serves the same role as the CPU, but for graphics visual displays. The GPU processes uh, data for digital display and video graphics. Question number nine, why are you a good fit for this position? And this, the answer to this question is going to really depend on you, how much previous experience you have, what you're currently doing, how much knowledge about the subject matter you have. That's all going to be dependent on you, your background and your personality traits and skills. Now, why you might be a good fit for this position, you could say is, well, I have my A plus certification. So I'm certified in desktop hardware, software, and mobile devices. That's definitely going to qualify you. And you can give some past customer service experience to bring the customer service piece in, or you can make a statement about the value of customer service that you know in order to bring the customer service piece in. So if you've got skills or experience with computer desktop hardware and software and some customer service skills that is why you would be a good fit for this position because it is an entry-level it position and they're going to need you to just have the basics you'll be trained on the rest and a lot of it is personality question number 10 and this is the final one what are some commonly used network cables and the answer to this question is Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, and Cat6a. Um, the Cat in Cat5 and Cat6 stands for category. So it's category 5, category 5e, category 6. And that just defines the type of cable you're dealing with. And if you really want to get some extra points, you will look up the ranges for each of those cables I just named and the uh, maybe the RFCs on them to give some extra information to be able to provide with the answer to this question. And that's just going to be extra credit. And that'll be it for those questions and answers in this interview. Now, just a, a couple of tips. A lot of times in interviews, especially in um, entry level, it's more about personality necessarily than it is in skill. Once an interviewer decides they like you, then it's just a matter of, do they like you more than the other people that they've interviewed? So if you can really, you know what I'm saying, gain a rapport with your interviewers, or if they just like your stuff, the way you articulate yourself, some of your experiences, you're going to have a better chance of landing that position. You want to try to remain calm and be friendly. Kind of think of it like uh, you're just talking to a friend. You know, you're not going to die if you don't get this position. You're not going to die if they say no. So it's not going to hurt you, so to speak. So relax, be yourself and kind of engage with the interviewers like you would you know, a close friend. Don't use any slang or thing, crazy stuff you would do with friends, but, you know, relax and be like as if you would be with someone you were comfortable with. And that's going to, uh, you know, you're going to give that off and people are going to be able to feel that and respond to it. So with that being said, that's going to be the end of these questions and answers, Tech Fam. If you're not already a member of the channel, and you like this kind of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I will be producing more content like this on an ongoing basis. Do us a favor and go ahead and smash the like button so we can get these videos in front of many other people who could find some useful information here and benefit from what we are discussing on this channel. If you would like to be one of the first people to see new content when it drops, click the bell icon and YouTube will let you know almost immediately. And with that tech fam, until the next video, peace.